So, what can I say about Carbonara of the Iron Fortress? It's very enjoyable to watch. The pacing itself, even though the ending was really abrupt, it's enjoyable to watch. The world itself is probably the most enjoyable part of the whole entire anime, in my own opinion. I don't think the plot itself has got beyond the point of standardized what I've seen in Tetsuya Raikai animes. It's society crumbles, it's this threat that's attacking society. Society has to build something in order to survive. They build this thing, it survives for a very long time. In the end, society falls, they've got to rise up against the threat and survive. Granted, it hasn't got beyond that point. I just think the Kabane themselves are interesting enough that it kind of drives the narrative across. In a sense, if something, if anything else is bad, the threat itself is interesting. I kind of like the threat. The threat can be anywhere. The threat can grow in numbers instantly. That's what I kind of like about it. It's, it's, it's a zombie. In a sense, it's essentially a zombie. There's something more about it. Since at this time, it's exposed heart. There is a layer of iron in front of it, which basically means they have unless they actually attack the head, or they actually have armor piercing rounds, they are practically screwed, they can't really kill it. In the end, that's what Akuma actually builds, Akuma actually builds a gun that can actually pierce the heart. I was kind of like, okay, kind of interesting. But still, the world is just enjoyable to watch. Society was the most was the most interesting point in the sense, I liked how it was built, I liked how it worked, I liked the rules themselves. The rules themselves kind of got broken instantly as soon as one of those people came in. As soon as one of the higher jurors came in and they actually suspected one of the guys to be a Kabane, they broke their rules in the sense, they kind of said, okay, if you're infected, you've got to be sent to prison for three days and in that time you're basically washed over. And if you're basically turned into a Kabane, you're dead. But as soon as this person was suspected to be a Kabane, they broke those rules. They're about to kill him. Like, in a sense, if a Kabane didn't actually come in and step in and say, Look, guys, what the hell are you doing? Stop it. He's not a Kabane. That guy would have died. In like, a sense, he would have died instantly. It kind of tells you if you're in a situation that is basically life or death, or you've got a lot of people around you, or there's actually a royal family, because in that case, there's actually a royal family standing right beside him, you would actually break your own entire rules that society's actually just built. And I think that's actually the most interesting thing. Society's just is a bit weird in that regard, in the sense it would just break their own rules if something like that attacked. In the end, that guy wasn't a Kabane because actually killed him in the end. It kind of just makes you realise if they actually lessened and actually kind of just fought things through, they wouldn't have killed that guy, they wouldn't have killed an innocent person. But in the end, it kind of bites them in the arse because basically society falls. Train comes in, they try to stop the train coming in, train goes over the tracks, train just kind of explodes, full of Kabane, society falls. Akoma just realises at that point, he's got to rise up. Says at that point, Look, society's falling right in front of me. I ain't gonna sit here and say, Christ, and the bison gonna die. I'm gonna use my weapon I just built, which can pierce the heart. He actually does in the end. He actually uses that weapon, kills the actual Kobane, hits himself, Christ, and the bicycle, I've done it. But in the end, he's actually been bitten. I was kind of like, huh, head to Arakai. You've killed your protagonist straight freaking away. You didn't wait like five episodes like an attack on Titan. You just killed him instantly. But in the end, he actually doesn't die because he actually kind of says to himself, Christ, it's trying for my body really fast. I've got to stop it getting to my brain. He doesn't actually sit there and go, oh, screw it, screw it, I'm screwed. He actually stops it. He actually kind of closes off, almost killing his own self. In a sense, he actually like kind of strangles himself almost to death and sorts of virus going through his like kind of body and actually just survives it. I was kind of like, I like him. He's actually kind of cool. Since he's just like that kind of protagonist, I didn't really think I was going to like. But he's kind of cool. Hopefully he's a bit more interesting than Aaron Yeager in a sense. Hopefully he actually got beyond the point of one-dimensional characters. Hopefully he just got beyond that point. Because I think they actually have. But time will tell how well he actually does do. Hopefully he actually does do pretty damn well. So, so far, I kind of like him. Mumei. Gotta say about Mumei. She's really interesting. She's kind of that eccentric kind of character. But still... She's interesting in her own regard, in a sense, she actually is a one-woman army. She actually just took down a freaking Gabane instantly without a problem. She had a freaking sandal with a knife on it. I was kind of like, don't get in her way, don't piss her off, you piss her off, you're screwed. And yeah, i got to say, soundtrack, Sawano, hopefully you bring her A again next episode, because I didn't really see much instance beside the ending that Sawano's soundtrack was used, but that ending point, when it was used, I was like, holy crap. Sawano, mate, you're still good. You're still on point. You're still Jesus Christ on the disc. Good job. He's not, he's not your know, Kano level yet, but he's still freaking great to listen to. I just love his soundtracks. I love him as, in general. And this animation. Oh my god, the animations. It was just freaking nice. It was amazing to watch and look at. It was amazing. It looked like a 90s anime just reborn in 2016. It looked freaking amazing. I was like, Wit Studios. You have outdone yourself this fracking time. It was freaking nice to look at. The actual style itself, again, as I just said, it looked like a 90s anime. I was like, for a minute there, I was like, 
Hmm. Am I just going back in time a little bit here? Kind of like it. Hopefully it does retain that style. It does use CG quite a bit with the trains of the Hanajiros themselves. They use it uses CG, but still, it didn't matter because the actual style itself, it was used quite well, so it didn't actually look like it was kind of breaking the kind of like, I don't know, the animation itself, because sometimes 3D is used and it just completely just breaks it. Here it was used sparingly, so it was actually quite nice. I like to use a 3D. When it's used good, it's good. When it's used bad, it's bad. Here it was used really freaking great. So the animation was on point, but it's a Wit Studios anime. What's the point in saying, oh, the Grise animation's good, it's a Wit Studios anime, because all their animes look freaking great. In a sense, they're always one-upping themselves, and this one basically is their best looking anime. So yeah, what can I say? Do go watch it. The Hano Jiro is the probably most interesting thing in a sense. They are trains, but they're freaking interesting trains. Uh, just, they transport everything. They are freaking interesting. So, yeah. That was Cup of the Iron Fortress Episode 1. Very freaking good start. Hopefully it retains that quality. Hopefully it doesn't come a train wreck, pun the pun, by the end of the, of the anime series. Hopefully it just retains that quality, because I think this actually could be a really freaking good anime. Could I say become anime this season? It's too early to say. I'm not going to say, oh, well, this one's anime the season opening. No, there's been better still, but this one's actually still interesting. The world itself is interesting. The characters themselves are interesting. The soundtrack is freaking great. The animation is phenomenal. Tetsuo Raikai might have just pulled it out of the bag. Hopefully, it actually goes beyond the point and just set pieces. Hopefully, it just goes to the point of becoming a really freaking good director, because I believe he can. I like his work. He has done some fracking great animes. Yeah, sometimes they are laden with like narrative issues, but hopefully it actually does improve. But with all that said, being a driver, if you leave a like, do leave a like, it's quite a bit, leave a sub, do leave a sub, it's something quite a bit. But with all that said, being a driver, and no, it's a bye for now.